Sandy's confession and Alice's intervention sparked a turning point for Taylor. She wasn't about to trust either of them with her deepest, darkest secrets. But the break in outright antagonism left her more energy for finalizing her pitch and really focusing on the work that was most important to her. So while Leonard was technically still insisting on driving her to and from work every day, the conversations were less defined by the headaches of work. Instead, he started to share with her stories from his childhood, describing all of the ways in which he, Alice, and Elliot had caused complete chaos during some of their parents' summer parties. The Alice that Leonard described was actually someone Taylor thought she could be friends with. She was bright and smart, a little bit sarcastic, and in many ways, she almost reminded her a bit of Claire. Taylor wasn't entirely sure she believed everything he was saying about her, though, and hadn't seen anything from Alice's behavior to suggest that she was still the same girl that he remembered. But for now, she was willing to let the matter rest. He seemed happier, and that was more of a comfort than she'd expected. It was during one of those conversations that Taylor learned more about how Leonard and Luca had come to work together. In the past, Leonard had described his role within the family company as a problem solver. It was his job to go into a business that was struggling and revitalize it. One of his previous posts, a hotel in Italy, had been run by Luca's stepmother. She had been trying to keep management afloat during the financial struggles of the pandemic and had recruited many family members into running one of the smaller, but no less popular branches of the hotel. Luca had been assigned as Leonard's driver back then, serving as both assistant and tour guide while he was in the city. They've been inseparable ever since. I bet you know all of the fun stories then, Taylor said to Luca one morning as they waited in traffic on Fairfax. He grinned at her through the rearview mirror. I'm a vault, he said. I open only in the most specific of circumstances. He means with the right application of bribery, Leonard said dryly. He'd been in his position for a few weeks now, and his wardrobe was slowly starting to reflect the more laid-back, casual vibe of L.A. Today, he'd swapped his suit for smart linen trousers and a pale blue shirt. He'd left the top button undone. She wondered if he'd done that on purpose. It's hard to find good gelato, Luca shrugged. Taylor laughed. (laughs) We're in L.A. I'm sure you can find good gelato. You'll have to take me on a quest. It can be my reward for you smashing your pitch. That's not typically how rewards work, but fine. Leonard's hand brushed hers delicately. It could have been an accident. Their contact was so brief, but she doubted it. How are you feeling? You ready? Thanks for the reminder, she thought. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Remember what we've talked about, Leonard said. Authenticity. Do you know what order we'll be going in? Alice's team is opening, Leonard answered. When Taylor pulled a face, he added, Trust me, it's better than her closing. Alice would be a tough act to follow, that was true, but it would be even harder to stand out and be memorable when you were followed by the prestige and glamour of a celebrity designer. I got this. You got this, Leonard agreed. It was hard to believe that the day of the pitch had already arrived. It felt like only a few days ago that she was first walking into Leonard's office. So much had happened since then, and so much had changed. Luca gave her an encouraging thumbs up once they parked up. His support and enthusiasm was infectious, giving her a much needed boost of confidence as she walked into the office. That confidence only improved further when she was met with a sea of smiling faces, Claire at the front holding a large banner that loudly announced in bright glittery letters that Taylor kicks ass. Leonard left without saying another word. He offered Taylor a small smile before stepping into the elevator. He couldn't say anything further, but then he didn't need to. She returned it with a smile of her own, then gave all of her attention to the people who had come out to support her. This is too much, she gushed, feeling a little teary-eyed. I don't know what to say. 
say you'll remember us when you're big and famous and we're just the little people from logistics, Claire beamed. And say that martinis are on you when we're celebrating your amazing win. It looked like Taylor was going to have to throw a martini and gelato-themed party once this was done. If she was successful. If she was unsuccessful, she could throw a martini and gelato-themed commiseration party. Either way, they all deserved to let their hair down a little bit. She really had struck gold when she'd been reassigned to logistics. Her life could have been miserable, but she'd managed to make friends. What time are you up? Claire asked, shooing everyone back to their desks, the impromptu party over. Ten, Taylor answered. It was enough time to drink at least three coffees and work herself in and out of a small panic attack. Or two. Okay, Claire nodded. You want to practice with me again? I want to crawl under the table and die, Taylor said faintly, her confidence fading as quickly as it rose. God, what if I embarrass myself? Then we'll buy you a fake ID and help you move to Mexico. That might not be a bad idea. Nobody knew her in Mexico. I don't want to let anyone down, she admitted. I know this is a second chance and I've worked hard for it, but... But you're going to be amazing, Claire promised. You know this project inside out, and you know what this company needs. I do. You do. I got this. You totally got this. Taylor reached over and gave Claire a huge hug. I couldn't have done any of this without your help. It's true, Claire grinned. I continue to be invaluable in every arena that I exist in. And if I could bottle that confidence for you, I would shower you with it now. If you could bottle that confidence, then neither of us would need to work, Taylor said dryly. Claire gave her an encouraging squeeze. Want me to lock the design guys in the bathroom? Tempting. Locking Mike in any kind of room and throwing away the key was always tempting. But no, if she was going to beat them, she was going to beat them fairly. And if they were going to beat her, then they'd have to bring their A-game. She did have this. With over an hour to go before she was due to pitch, she sat behind her desk and worked her way through the morning's emails. The wedding planner she'd been dealing with, who was still so desperately trying to book a new venue had sent her a pleading message, complete with screenshots of an unhinged conversation she was currently having with her bride. I'm desperate. Taylor had tried explaining that it was an issue only events could really handle for her, but by the sound of things, the planner wasn't getting any answers. Still riding the highs and lows of her fluctuating confidence, Taylor picked up her phone and dialed through to events. Hey, She greeted when one of the interns picked up. Is Dominique available? Unoffensive music filled the line as her call was transferred. Dominique here. Hey, it's Taylor from Logistics. I've got a wedding planner who might be about to commit a homicide. Bride. Bride, can I pass her over to you? She's desperate to get some answers, but I don't think I can really help. Of course, send me the details. Thanks. I think her previous inquiry might have been caught up in the inbox filters. That was corporate shorthand for someone's really dropped the ball here, and they both knew it. Right, Dominique said. Leave it with me. Thanks. I really appreciate it. When the call was done, Taylor forwarded the email chain through to Dominique. Less than a minute later, she'd received an email back. I got this. Thanks. One win for the day down. She still had nearly an hour to go. It was a struggle not to watch the clock tick ever closer to the big moment, but she managed to distract herself until there were only 15 minutes left to go. She made a quick run to the restroom to brush her teeth and check her breath, then grabbed a bottle of water from the kitchen. With her design portfolio under her arm, she made her way up to the executive suites. Mandy, Mike, and Alice were just finishing up their presentation, Taylor only caught the last few seconds, but even that sounded amazing. As expected, Mike sneered at Taylor as he left the room. Mandy could barely look at her, but Alice smiled and winked. Was it a good wink? Who knew? 
Honestly, she was almost scared to find out. She waited outside the door to the conference room and tried to get her wild heartbeat under control. The board would need a few minutes between each pitch, but the longer she was waiting, the harder it was to keep her head. At least there wasn't actually a stage and spotlight involved. Taylor Yates? Taylor recognized Nathan Blake's voice as he called her into the room. He was sat at the head of the table, with Leonard to his left. There were six other people around the table. Taylor recognized two of them from the Christmas party last year, but the others were a mystery to her. She'd done some research, hoping to get a read on the kind of audience she would be facing, but there had been no guidelines on which board members will be attending. Of the ones who had shown up, she was fairly certain she'd caught the toughest. For a second, she froze, and panic threatened to blow its way up her throat. What was she even thinking? Why would these people care at all about her designs? Why would they even give her the time of day? For the first time, she wondered if the rumors were actually true, if she was here only because Leonard had arranged for her to be so. She met his gaze across the room. His smile was faint, but his eyes were warm. So what if it was true? He believed in what she had to say. He believed in her vision. She'd convinced him, and if she could convince Leonard Wilson, she could convince Nathan Blake. And if she could convince Nathan Blake... Thank you for taking the time to see me today, she said, finding her nerve. Thank you for all the work that you put in to get this far, Nathan responded. Do you need anything from us before you begin? And just like that, a sense of calm settled over her. Actually, she said... I do. I want you to think back to the very first time you experienced wonder. She could see the surprise on their faces, but to their credit, they seemed to be willing to go along with her for now. That was all she needed, just that one moment to make a connection, to bring them into a place where they could empathize with the customers of their new hotel. You don't need to tell me what it is or where you are, I just want you to keep that feeling in mind. I want you to remember what it was like, how it made you feel, and I want to ask you what you would be willing to do to experience it for the first time again. A sly smile slid across Nathan's face. He looked at Leonard out of the corner of his eye and quietly chuckled to himself. Taylor spread her designs out on the conference table in front of them. Some of them were two-dimensional, Some of them she designed to pop up, giving them a better idea of the scope and scale of what she had planned. I'd like to welcome you to the Ace Group's newest hotel, The Wonder. 